Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to this class. Uh, how are you guys? Yeah. Getting uh, excited about new semester? Yeah. Not today. Not today. <laughs> uh, I hope we can uh, all find something uh, excited in this class. This uh, I have not uh, taught the undergraduate uh, level, uh, sophomore level. Yes, you are sophomores, right? Yeah. yeah for for probably a decade. Yeah. I taught this class about twenty years ago, and uh, then we got rid of it because it's too mathematical, too uh, abstract. And because uh, we didn't know better, because we uh, didn't quite uh, handle it right. Okay. 20 years later, I think we're ready. <laughs> we're ready for you guys. Okay. So this is uh, going to be a slightly different uh, class. And it's going to be taught differently. It's going to, uh, it, it, we'll, 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 we'll see that. Okay. The, uh, <coughs> The name, signals and systems. So this flows above all the engineering nuts and bolts. These are at different level. And this is applicable to all engineer systems. It doesn't matter electrical, mechanical, aeronautical, chemical, or doesn't matter. Right. So, 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 so this is something that uh, you, it's really going to test your ability to think outside your comfort zone. Because as engineers, we like to see, touch, and make things work, right? hands on we call it hands on experience. But there's something more than hands on obviously. Right? Otherwise, we'll be all uh, technicians. Right? There's something about that what we are doing. So this is that kind of class. So this is why it's hard to teach, it's hard to learn. This is why we, took, we, we got rid of it you know, until uh, now, until you guys came along. You know. uh, and also, it made me think, what's the best way to teach it? How do we uh, uh, construct a class so you can uh, not only learn what's about the nuts and bolts, Right? But also grasp it and make a connection between the abstract concept and the everyday uh, practice. And this can really make you go far in your career. Right? So, so let's, let's, let's uh, you know, uh, talk about what are the signals, what are the systems. And I bring to you a device. Anybody recognize what this is? If you, if you don't, it's okay. Not many, not many people uh, can. It's a chariot. Yeah. Not any chariot, a particular kind of chariot. And this, 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 uh, this uh, was designed this was uh, 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 made before written history. Before, I mean, uh, let me emphasize it, before written history. So there was no record who invented this, who made the first uh, uh, prototype, and, uh, and, and, and who uh, 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 was responsible for this. And it was a mystery, really, this kind of chariot. And it's called self source pointing chariot. Source pointing chariot. Right? I can I can show you uh, uh, maybe during the break how, how this works. Yeah, so, so 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 you have uh, a chariot. You can chariot can carry your generals, can carry your your your, your troops. Um, but there's a, a a wooden figure on top of a chariot. Right? Now, what's the most important signal or information during the war? when two armies fighting each other at night. And this, again, this is before written history, this is before the invention of compass. 
Direction. Direction. You are <laughs> you march into a battlefield, you have to know your direction. Right? And and this is the invention that solve that problem, that meet that need. Right? That's engineering. That's engineering. You have a daring need and you find a solution and you implement the solution and you make it work. Right? And uh, uh, this uh, this was uh, like you, like you can see uh, uh, a, a set of gear system gear system right? and uh, uh, it was uh, uh, 3D printed last semester by a senior in my class right? and he got interested uh, in this I didn't ask him to do it he chose to do it. And he found the information online, and he had he happened to have a, a, a 3D printer access to a 3D printer, so he printed it. Right? So that brings us to a system. We need a signal, we need information, but that didn't come out of the uh, 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 blue, right? You have to make the you have to find how you obtain this pointing information. We need direction without compass. How do we how do we how do we uh, how do we obtain that uh, that uh, information? Yeah. And this student, his name is James Jinda, found found it online and built a system. This is a system that will give us uh, provide us the directional information, the directional signal. Right? And in the process, he f uh, he he uh, he, he uh, experienced a life-changing uh, uh, thought process. And I will show you. I will show you. Uh, um, maybe in the next slides. Yeah. Do we have a pointer here? Okay. Uh, pointer. Uh, no? Pointer. That's okay. This is your degree map, right? I, I taught this class last semester as an elective. So this is a this is the people that on the way out. Right? And you you are you are halfway through here. You're you're here, right? This is your second uh, semester, your second year, right? If I'm not mistaken, by and large, I mean there are exceptions. Right? And this is you entering the entering the uh, the program. Yeah, you were touring the campus. You were doing your your so so, so a congratulations. You are halfway through. All right. And uh, James Jinda took uh, uh, control systems fourth year as a senior. And uh, uh, he said, well, I, 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 I didn't quite uh, see how this connect to what I do. Uh, he has some engineering experience. In fact, he said, uh, I will never do controls in my career. You know, I would rather be caught dead. That's his word. <laughs> Very emotional, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, so, so, so uh, uh, when I talk about life-changing experience, after he did this, he changed his mind. He, 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 this is what I want to do in my career. So he 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 went and he found him job himself a job, control engineer. Huh? And he was all alone. I, I have about ten uh, ten undergraduate students. This is a graduate class, but I uh, gave special permission. To some undergraduate student, and uh, and they experience something similar. That, that there's uh, uh, the way we, t we we taught it, the way we experience it. It's not how I taught it; it's how they experience it. You know, like the way he uh, 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 did research on South Point in Chariot, the way he made it, the way he, the way he demonstrated. He finally made the connection between abstract mathematical concept and engineering practice, and that's a powerful transformative experience. So, so toward the end of class, uh, uh, 
<coughs> quite a few of them uh, challenged me. Right? Uh, the, can you do this earlier in the curriculum? It would be ideal if we had, can do something like this you know, when we first started learning engineering. <clears throat> like I said, I, uh, I, I don't normally t teach low-level low level, uh, uh, courses, uh, but I found the intimate connection between what I do as a, a, a scholar, as a researcher, and what I do as a teacher. So let me uh, show you a video <coughs> that uh, CSU uh, made the advertisement for its uh, research office. Because right? I'm going to say something about the, the program and I, I need some credibility before uh, I, I say it. When I'm not teaching, I do research. In my research, I spent 20 years in this laboratory to create a disruptive technology known as active disturbance rejection control, or ADRC. ADRC is being adopted around the world in all industry sectors. Control is the brain of all industry machines. We make it smarter, more active, more precise, and more energy efficient. Look at these two methods interconnected with soft springs. Conventional technology cannot make them move without hesitations or oscillations. We can make them move in unison, as if there were no springs. We can do it with ease. How do we do it? We are engineers, but we also study history and philosophy. We don't accept conventional ideas at face value. We trace them to their origin. We study their evolution, and we question their premise and relevance. When deficiency is discovered, innovation follows. The results speak for themselves. In Ohio, we help Parker Hannison reduce energy consumption by more than 50% across 10 production lines. In Texas, we help Texas Instruments create a new line of motion control chips and go into a new market. In Denmark, we help Danforce make better automation equipment. In China, we make coal-fired power plants more efficient and less polluting. The list goes on. Our research at Cleveland State University puts a disruptive control technology in the hands of every engineer. It also makes Cleveland State University the center of new ideas in industrial controls. I have to be honest, it's hard to watch yourself. <laughs> it's really hard. It's not that good, but uh, they will do. Because I want to show you that uh, in teaching and in research, the key is to question, to bring that mentality. Yeah, so, so, so let's go back to the uh, to the uh, uh, degree map. Yeah. <clears throat> I have always have questioned about this. Yeah. I I entered university like yourself. 40 years ago. And I was taught like this. And 40 years later, the world is a different place. We're still teaching and learning like this. There's something that uh, not quite right in my mind. Right? So so where 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 do we even begin? You know, I, earlier in my career I was so busy. I don't have time to think about it. Now I do. <laughs> okay. so, 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 so it turned out it, it's quite controversial to teach engineering like this. And it was come, come, uh, controversial not just today. It's controversial 100 years ago. And there was a big debate in, in late 1800. Right. This model, this engineering uh, education model, this curriculum was instituted uh, during the, uh, in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. And it's conceived as a, a uh, science-based, 
science-based education. You start with uh, uh, science, mathematics, chemistry, right? The people who are teaching uh, this are all scientists. They have no conception of what uh, engineering is or what engineering, how engineering is different. So, so, so you are taught rigorous mathematics, you are taught physics, you, you, you taught the uh, chemistry with a uh, uh, assumption that you are going to use it. You are going to be able to, to use it. Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with this uh, idea, right? It's just, uh, this is not the only idea. And there was a big debate that, that uh, you know, whether we should uh, teach engineering as a applied science, or we should teach engineering as engineering. There's imagination involved. There's instinct involved. In the design, you cannot reduce design to a set of mathematical formulas. So that's what the debate about over 100 years ago. I can share the article with you about that debate. And this has a direct impact on us, on you and on me. On you as a student, on me as a teacher. Okay. And what follows in your third year, or fourth year, pretty much the same mentality. You learn principle, then you do examples, you, 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 you put it in your laboratory to verify it. Okay. So that, that pretty much shows how engineering is taught throughout the world for the last 100 years. But a lot of people were not quite happy with it. You know, so, so my instinct was confirmed. Because I, I always thought there was something not quite right with it. And then I opened my eyes and said, what, what, what does it come from? It come from uh, 18, 1830, 1840, France. The French people uh, came up with this, uh, this system. But the German, there's a, 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 a German in Germany, uh, people uh, 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 want nothing to do with this. Engineering start with design, start with artistic imagination, start with instinct, start with the ability to reduce a complex problem into a simple one. The physics, the science side is the opposite. You start with a simple problem, you give an exact solution. You think about it, right? You, uh, 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 it's a differential equation in the physics. Is simple, simplify the problem, exact solution. But that's not engineering. Engineering, you reduce a complex problem. Right? You, you, you deal with complex problem with approximate solution. Your solution is always approximation or result of approximation. It's always a result of a compromise. You have to comp make a compromise between, between the quality and the cost, remember? But that's not taught anywhere in the science-based curriculum. This is why when people get to Cine Design stage, I, I supervise a, a Cine Design a, a, a project for the last 20 years, right? And I see I see the difficulty, I see the struggle when you are trained. I myself experienced this. I was trained all the way through. Then at very last, boom, I'm hit with a, a, a real engineering problem. You design something for this purpose, and that was clueless. In, in my training, I never had one design problem given to me. It's always analysis. You're given a circuit, <laughs> you, you, you're taught seven nine. You calculate the, uh, the, 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 the equivalent of resistance or impedance. And there was some, some circuit given, right? They never say, let's clear the problem. Give me a circuit. They done the circuit. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. And the people are turned off by that. You know, the guy who made that, the chariot, he was turned off. He said, I, I could not see the, the, the connection. But once the connection is made, it was transformative. It's, trans it's, it's, it's a, a shattering, it was shattering. It changed his whole career conception. He, he, he went from well, nothing to do with control to a career in controls. Yeah. So this may be a little bit upsetting or confusing, or, but that's good. Because that means you are not brainwashed like I was. And this is the only way to learn engineering. I mean, this is one way to learn engineering. If, if, you are, if you are interested to go to a graduate school, get a PhD, become a professor, this is perfect for you. Right? Very solid, academic, 
curriculum. But if your interest is, is go out there, practice engineering, to become as good an engineer as you can be, this only give you part of the foundation. Okay, I just want, to, uh, want you to realize where we are in this spectrum. You know, we have excellent students in this class who can be uh, a, 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 a winner at any academic program in the country. I, I witnessed over and over again, a CSU student come out of this program can get a PhD anywhere. We have that kind of caliber of student. Sometimes students themselves do not realize how good they are, and it's our job to tell them how good they are. Right? So that's one spectrum. The other uh, 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 end of spectrum is people with hands-on experience. People want to do something. People want to design something, make something work. Right? <clears throat> they have no interest in, in becoming a professor. Right? That's, you know, then you have people in the middle. Right? This curriculum is good to address one, one, one extreme, one side, but it's not so good for the other side. And that's where the debate was about. Right. You are taking circuit lab, are you? Right? You already had, or, or, or you're going to take an electronic lab or control lab, communication lab, power electronic. You know where those laboratories came from? At the beginning, there was no laboratory in the engineering curriculum. The, the, the laboratory idea came from Germany. And the German professor says, you cannot just teach uh, uh, these uh, to a student and expect, expect them to be an engineer. So the idea of having a laboratory in the engineering curriculum is to give people real world scenarios. So you go into a lab, here's the real world problem, solve it. Open ended. So that's an engineering lab, as opposed to a physics lab, chemistry lab. Right? We're, we're all, uh, 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 the problem are given, right? Uh, the solutions are unique. <laughs> Engineering solutions are never unique. So I encourage my, my, my students who are teaching the lab, give students open-ended problem. Make them experience the real world scenario where you have to make a compromise between the performance and the cost. That's where our uh, laboratory originally uh, came from, but over the years it gets diluted. It gets diluted because most of our professors, they're trained as acad academicians, they're trained as the scholars, they, they publish papers, they get grant from NSF, National Science Foundation. And so they're not necessarily situated in the engineering practice. And over the years, and over long years, over, over a century, and gradually it become a formality. Gradually the engineering life become a science life. Gradually, when we talk about STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, gradually science and mathematics took over. Right? So this may be upsetting to you uh, that uh, uh, we don't have a perfect curriculum in our engineering uh, uh, education anywhere in the world, not just here. But I think uh, uh, at, at the same time, it prepares you better than any other programs. If you know this early, if you are aware of this uh, 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 need for you and for me to make connections to the real world. Yeah. And that's not just empty saying. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm going to try to do that uh, in my best to make it happen. And how do we make it happen? Like in my video, we, 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 we never took anything at face value. We scrutinize. Whatever we learn, we want to ask not just what it is, but what it's come from. My mother had very limited education, but when I prepared for college uh, exam, she told me that after so, so many years, as you remember, not only you have to understand what it is, and you have to understand where it comes from. <laughs> That's her advice, and still true today. So I'm going to tell you, right off bat, where we come from. Right? And as a human being, the engineer doesn't have to be uh, stiff, right? We don't have to be, we're also uh, a flesh and blood human being, and all human beings. Love, good story.
Right? So, so I'm going to uh, 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 tell this other story. But also, I want you to tell me a story before the end of the semester. At least one story. So that's going to be in your assignment. Right? You go out, you dig out the, the, uh, the materials, okay? you write a script, and you produce a video, and you tell a story. Or write a presentation, or write an essay or something. Uh, we'll get to that not and both later. Okay? So let's start, with, let's start with the story. Let's start with how electrical engineering starts. Where does the field come from? You, know? you in your circuit you uh, learn seven nine theorem, right? Did you ever wonder who seven nine was? What made him uh, produce that theorem? You should. Anything has a name, there's a story behind. So 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 we are going to, to to take that approach in our education. So, so you and I, we're, we're in the same boat. We're going to do this together. Right? I learned how to do this on the fly, because nobody teaches me how to do this. <laughs> it's bothered me for many, many years to no end. Right? So even today, even in this class, in this new class, I'm struggling to put everything together. Eh? So I can imagine your anxiety, your, your uncertainty. Hey, what kind of a class is this? Should I withdraw from this? <laughs> right? Should I go back to a, a, a other class where it's more structured, where it's more defined? You are welcome to do that, especially those who are not required to take this. Eh? But if you are with me, if you are here for the, for the, for the entire uh, 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 semester, let's take that as a process. Right? It begins with the beginning. Right? Yeah. We need to know our history. We need to get our story together. Right? So I call two people. One is a writer, Michael uh, Crichton. If you don't know history, then you don't know anything. Right? You are a leaf that doesn't know it's part of a tree. I think that's why I was so bothered for, 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 for many years that I didn't know the tree. I didn't know I didn't know the tree. Right? Until I started digging it out. Oh, this, is, this makes sense. Next person, you don't, you don't have to explain it to me anymore. I see the history, I understand it now. Because it's all in seven and zero it came from a human being, a brain of a human being. There must be a problem before him. And must be a process for him to get to that solution. And it's taught in the classroom because that solution has impact. It has to be right in some 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 aspect. So you if you ask that kind of question every step of the way, in your in all your remaining classes you will be way ahead of your peers. And most people, my observation is they, they, mo they go through the motion. You know, they, they enter the program, fresh. Right? By the end, toward the third year, fourth year, they couldn't get out of here fast enough. Nobody said, oh, I, I'm, done, I'm, not, I'm not done with learning yet. Let me stay here for one more year. I haven't seen one person. Everyone uh, to, uh, tells me oh, how great this, uh, uh, it, it is to, to be finally within the uh, 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 shouting distance of getting out of here. Right? And you should see uh, uh, what my student wrote last semester. Right? They recognize it's a lifelong learning process. They know what to do now. So to know your history. And, and this, uh, the second quote is from Dr. Herbert uh, Sierra Romero, a professor from, uh, a renowned professor from Mexico. He's actually here. If you want to talk to him, he's in uh, 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 
uh, Fen Hao uh, 3, 316. He just got here a couple, uh, couple days ago. And he said, if, you don't, if we don't respect history, we don't have a future. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's go forward. The beginning. Where does this all begin? What do you think? Where did electrical engineering begin? What is that something we must have before we can talk anything about electricity? For thousands of years, centuries, millennia, people People are experience static. Now you drop and you get static. You, you get shock. Shock. Thousand years ago. Until, until uh, uh, 220 years ago, 221 years ago, to be, to, be, to, be precise, to be precise, we have this. Let me. <coughs> we call a uh, 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 voltage. Vote for a reason. This is from this guy's name. This is 19, uh, 1799. 1799, this, we finally got what? We finally got the source. We finally got the battery. We finally can have a, cons uh, 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 steady supply of electricity. And this guy did it for us. Right, it's called the uh, uh, voltaic pile, it's a battery. Yeah. Again, this is uh, a, uh, a, 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 a very brief history. I don't go into details. Maybe, maybe you can uh, 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 use this as uh, one of the topics you want to uh, dig into. Re reproduce this uh, 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 voltaic pile and demonstrate to class how, how, how this was uh, done, how this was uh, invented. What makes him do this? <laughs> That's the question. Okay. Then you humanize engineering. It, it didn't drop out of blue. And this is not, this is not the, uh, uh, out of our reach. We can do this. We're all human beings. If we get, just get into the thought process. Okay. This is why I, I say in the video, we get into the thought process and we discover deficiencies. Everything that people ever done has deficiencies. And if we can detect observe, find that deficiency, that's where we come in. That's where innovation come in. That's where improvement come in. That's where new technology come in. It's all about seeing it. But how do you see it? You get to get into the mindset of these great people. These are the people that changed the world, changed history. And they're human beings. So now the, 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 the seven and theorem, the, the, the votes, the Ohm's law, come alive. It's, end of, uh, it's a result of a, a thought process. And thought process in somebody's brain. Uh, and it's a process you can understand. When you can understand, it empowers you. It makes you feel like you can do something with your mind. Uh, so, so this is uh, uh, 1799. And uh, we, we, we finally had a battery. 21 years later, 21 years later, <laughs> this is an experiment very seldom talked about. And this name, uh, Orsted, right? we, we, have you ever heard this name before in your, in your uh, 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 physics uh, uh, book, right? What did he do? He was a teacher, and by accident, he found something. What did he find? What did he find? He was teaching. Uh, he, he, he was, he, he was uh, 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 doing demonstration of electricity. You know, this is a modern rendition. When he was doing this, he, he had uh, a, a battery and he has uh, a measurement uh, 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 device. And he was showing that by connecting battery to a uh, circuit, you, you generate a, uh, electricity. So he was doing an in-classroom demonstration. Accidentally, 
he found something else. See, this is a, 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 a difference between the, the mind of a scientist and the mind of a, uh, uh, how do I put it, <clears throat> people less scientific. And he observed a phenomenon that he never let it go. But later on, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm going to, to, to show you the biggest regret Edison, Thomas Edison had. Because he observed something and he let it go. Okay. So, so I'm going to give a, give a contrast. So, so by, by, by turning on and off of uh, 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 the uh, uh, circuit, he observed something. So, uh, so there's the, I think there's the, a uh, video. This can be clicked. Yeah. Let's see uh, uh, what he uh, observed. What did he observe? He didn't know the concept. There was no concept of magnetic field back then. That's a good answer. Later on, people realized what, what it is. He observed that the, the, electricity, the electricity in the wire generated torque, generated mechanical force that pushed a, a, a compass around, a compass. Why is that? Why is that significant? Why is that important? Why is that uh, 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 significant? Small contact force. It oper oper operating uh, over a distance, right? So you have to explain it because at that time there was no explanation. I'm going to get to the uh, conceptual relation or explanation later, but this is a sheer by a sheer accident. He turned on or turned off the uh, the electricity. Boom! Something else happened quite unexpected because the, 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 the compass is not connected to the circuit. There's no connection. Why is, there the, why is it rotate? Is it uh, uh, something uh, by accident or something uh, uh, there's a, a, a deep principle behind it? He himself didn't know. The, 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 he discovered it, but he had no idea. But this is the beginning of electrical engineering. You think about it. You think about it. Uh, from this point on, Let's go back to, uh, yeah. The, 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 yeah. From this point in time, see, he found the, 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 uh, the, the electricity can, 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 uh, can become a mechanical force. Okay. Then uh, 10, 20 years later, people made telegraph out of this. Because if you can uh, use electricity to make mechanical movement, then you can lay a cable connecting uh, 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 London and Paris. And you can send telegraph because you're controlling the uh, current. On, on, the, uh, on the other end, you, you, you get a mechanical reaction. You can, you can put it in a speaker, you can hear it. You can hear the tone or, or you can even uh, make it uh, print something. Right? So, so, so this is the beginning of the telegraph, this experiment lead to part uh, to uh, to uh, telegraph that that today in our curriculum if you look at your degree map communication that's where communication came from this is the beginning of telecommunication communication over long distance telecommunication what else what else can you imagine this will lead to motor motor dc motor well, you have to be creative, right? Because you want this constant uh, uh, rotation. There's only one wire. You push it once, and this other position, there's no more force. How do you supply continuous force to this uh, uh, rotating disk? Rotating, rotating, rotating wires. This is why in motor you have coils, multiple coils. So you line them out just right. So the, 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 so, so the uh, current is turned on and off sequentially among the coils. That's where the brush comes from, right? Then you keep pushing it, keep pushing it. Then it becomes a, a, a steady source of a mechanical force, mechanical power. See? This one little accident leads to communication, it leads to motors. 
And that's it. The rest of the history, I did say, but not quite. Right? So, so uh, 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 this, this experiment demonstrates electricity can be turned into magnetic forces. Right? And somebody else has this uh, key mind. He said, nature must be symmetric. If you can turn electricity into a magnetic force, the magnetics must be in some way able to generate electricity. This is almost like religion, because no scientific mathematical basis for that. You have to believe in it. You have to believe that if you can generate magnetics, forces, or flux, or field, whatever you call it, you must be able to reverse it. And this was easy. From electricity to, uh, to, uh, to magnetics, it's easy, because it was done by accident. You just observe it. Just don't let it go. The other way around, is it easy? Who, 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 was, who was the person who had this belief that this must be possible? Who was the person who persisted for six years doing all kinds of experiments until he actually discovered it? Tesla? Not quite, but we'll get to Tesla. But somebody has to do something to enable Tesla. That's that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good, uh, good uh, that's a good name. But b between this and Tesla, there need to be a couple of other people. See, the history is like a river. It's like a stream. We're all part of it. We're all leaves on a tree. See, Michael Faraday. Excellent. What's your name? Anthony. Anthony. I'll give you a bonus point for that. Now you make the connection. Now the physics come alive. So, so Michael Faraday is somebody who has very little education, but a strong conviction. Strong conviction. He, he taught himself, right? So let's go to the next slide. <coughs> Before we get to the uh, 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 Michael Faraday, we have to, we have to uh, stay true to our to our course, our course signal and systems. Right? So the, the, the first uh, uh, discovery of from electricity to uh, to uh, 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 to mechanical uh, 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 motion, right? and that was used to meet a human need. Right? Uh, and what's a human need? And this is this is what. Anybody recognize this structure? It's a great wall. It's a, it, it's a structure you can see from the space. Right? And uh, you see uh, uh, the tower uh, uh, in the great wall, stretching a thousand miles. What's the tower for? Probably you, didn't, you were not aware of this. Right? The tower was used to signal, to signal the invasion of the foreign army. Right? They burn and they, they make smoke. They use uh, animal waste to do that. Okay, so this, 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 uh, uh, just like the uh, the, the salt pointing chariot, you need information of direction, but also you need other information to win the war. Right? You need information that somebody coming to get you. Right? That's a human need. Again, that is what different uh, uh, differentiate engineering from mathematics from from uh, from. Uh, from a, from a, a, a physics, you know, in mathematics, in physics, we study for the sake of knowledge. We want to understand nature. We want to understand the law of nature. We want to understand the law of mathematics, or the language, for no other need, for no other uh, reason. But in engineering, in engineering, we put all our resources to meet human need. It's the winter. You live comfortable at home, hopefully in 65, 70 degrees. Who made it happen? Engineers made it happen. Who invented air conditioner? Carrier. How do I know? From the guy who installed my system at home. He knows history. 
Uh, the, the company carrier actually was the guy who invented AC. Right? So, so engineers, we study, we study to synthesize from mathematics, from science, uh, we, uh, and, and also from the human need, we put them together. And that's where the technology comes from. So our, our, part, our thought process produces technology. And technology is produced to meet the human need. That's <coughs> and oh, this is not, not very clear. So uh, in uh, 1820, we have the uh, experiment, Austin. 1837, we have uh, uh, the uh, 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 five terminal or five needle telegraph invented by Cook and Winston. You heard the name Winston, right? Winston Bridge, that's the guy. He was not fooling around. He invented, uh, uh, he invented uh, the, uh, the, uh, the five needle telegraph and uh, in 1851, they were able to communicate between Paris and London. That's how quickly the ideas, the discovery turned into a technology. People were not idling. This is in the middle of the Industrial Revolution, remember. Right. <clears throat> so that's the mindset. This is, this is when the engineering program was uh, uh, being initiated, first in France. Right. This is right in the middle of everything. Yeah. And uh, 1837, Morse code, anybody uh, 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 ham, ham radio? Uh, uh, to ham, ham radio? Morse code. This is a simplified version. This is still used. Uh, to, uh, today, yeah. instead of uh, five needle, one needle, okay. and use this code. <coughs> have you have you uh, 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 saw a movie or, or, or read an article about people communicating uh, the, their emergency by typing the wall with a, 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 a SOS? So what uh, what SOS sounds like? Let me see. SOS. S is uh, three short pulse. What's the uh, O? O is uh, three long pulse. So, so, so SOS sounds like this. That's a SOS. Right? I, I just read the news the other day, or yesterday. Somebody somewhere up in Alaska in the winter, by himself in the cabin, the cabin burned down. So he, so, so he, uh, on the snow, he put SOS, and he, and uh, 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 people found it, and the helicopter came and uh, rescued him. Right? SOS. So this is from the, the Morse code. Mor uh, uh, Morse is American, and he worked with the American. Uh, 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 physicist uh, Joseph uh, Henry to devise this code that used today, yeah, even uh, on a ship-to-ship -ship communication. Yeah, use light at night. That's how, how you communicate yeah, through, through, uh, through, uh, through, uh, through letters. Yeah. <coughs> so, so that's uh, quickly that's, uh, put, put into uh, uh, practice. Even more so in the next step. The next step is from Magnetism to electricity, and that's where the uh, uh, microfarad came in. Yeah. So uh, electricity and the magnetism are, 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 were considered two completely separate uh, uh, things, right? Until the Austin experiment in 1820, that got the microfarad to think. Eleven years later. Actually, he worked on it for six years. Remember, he was uh, a uh, <coughs> book binder. He was poor, and he had to labor. It's today, child labor, right? He, and uh, his uh, uh, employer was kind, gave him education, or gave him books to read. I mean, he was book binder, right? So he taught himself 
And then he started to, uh, to do his own experiment. Uh, he he, he started to think on, on his own. And uh, this is the period. He was born 1791, and uh, he died 1867. Okay, so it's right in that window. Uh, in 1931, he, uh, did, uh, he, after six years of struggling, he finally, he finally uh, uh, found a way of generating, generating uh, 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 electricity from uh, uh, mechanical motion. Right? The, the previous experiment, we have electricity it turned into mechanical motion. So he's, he, 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 he has this belief that there has to be uh, another way around of this. It has to be uh, uh, reciprocal. It has to be symmetric. But what makes it so difficult? What, what uh, took him six years? The hindsight is 2020. What makes the needle move? It's electricity. What's electricity? The movement of electrons, the movement of charges. Right? The other way around. Right? What generates electricity? The movement of mechanical or, or magnetic flux. There has to be changes. And that's what's a, 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 a kind of a counterintuitive to him. Because you have a stationary uh, wire and then you have movement right, of the uh, mechanical motion. Right? So now, you say, how do we, how, how do we uh, 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 reverse it? Right? Let's show, show the next uh, uh, slide. <coughs> this is the original uh, 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 experiment. Right? He's Han Zhang. This is Han Zhang person. Right? With intense curiosity and uh, 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 conviction. After six years of struggling, he finally figured it out. This is like uh, uh, the meter. The measure the uh, uh, current in the wire, like our ammeter. Okay. So this is connected to a coil, stationary coil. Okay. This is another coil, charged coil. Okay. So there's a mechanical uh, 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 magnetic flux. Now we know. You know now we have the idea, con conception. Oh, but back back then, uh, the, uh, there was no uh, uh, concept like that. But through experiment, he discovered if he moved the uh, small coil into the big coil, he see movement of the needle. He see uh, the, genera the generation of the electricity. All right. So uh, that changed the world. That that's that's has to happen before Tesla. All right. It, this, this is. Uh, how you generate, now you don't have to rely on battery anymore. Right? You find a way of generating electricity on demand. Uh, <coughs> so that's a description of, you, you can see this, uh, if you know where to look for it, it's right there in front of you. Uh, uh, let's go to the next uh, slide. Right. So that's, this is another experiment. So he did several experiments. Right. This is uh, another one. This is not the first one. Right. So he had battery, the coil, he, he flipped a switch. He saw the uh, current generate. And that's another verification. But what did, what did this turn into later on? What does it look familiar to? Transformer. Very good. So transformer came from <laughs> Faraday also. It came from a imagination, right? You have to be able to imagine something. Oh, nothing came out of the blue. Right? It's the imagination of the, uh, 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 the inventor who actually constructed this. This is called design. This is engineering design, except here he's tried to, dis uh, uh, to, to uh, disclose the uh, secret of nature. Right? But the mentality is the same. There's nothing there. We invent something for some purpose. Right? Flesh and blood, human being. 
Now, if he didn't do it, I'm sure somebody else down the line would do it. This is in human nature, that we are curious and we are hands-on. We experiment, we tinker, that's the key word, we tinker. Okay. This is another one. This, this is the basis of modern, this is a nuclear uh, power plant. This is the earlier, one of the earlier uh, power plant, rotating wires in, inside the, 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 the magnetic field. Where did it come from? It comes from Faraday. And he, he has this uh, magnetic here. And he uh, uh, have a disk, the handle, he rotated. And he discovered, by doing so, he found the uh, uh, electricity. Yeah, there's the voltage uh, between the, 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 the rim and the center of the disk. That generation. <laughs> this is where uh, the idea of uh, 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 the power, power, power plant, the first power plant, AC power plant, was built at Niagara Falls. Three hours from here. Go take a look. That's the idea. That's the idea. So that, that's why we, we need somebody in between Tesla and Austin. You see this continuing human evolution in ideas. Right? One after another. We're all part of a chain. We're all part of a tree. That is what we're studying in our curriculum. We're studying, we're, we're benefiting from all this genius. Forgot, we forgot too. We should be grateful. At the same time, be inspired. We're just as human. Each of us have imaginations. Don't let the curriculum take it out from you. Don't let your education diminish your interest. Yeah, that's <clears throat> Another person bef has to happen before Tesla. What did uh, Maxwell do? I mean, this is something you taught. Uh, you were taught in physics, right? So, what's the contribution of uh, uh, Maxwell, James Clerk Maxwell? To answer this question, you have to read Faraday. Faraday had this great discovery, but equally, if not more so, is his idea of magnetic field. Today, we, we take the field for granted. But back then, nobody knew what was the, uh, 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 the mechanism, what was the secret of nature that made this happen. Faraday conceived this idea of magnetic field, but nobody paid attention to him. He was frustrated. He was old. He died in, in 1867, right? Just before he died, Maxwell communicated with him. Mac Maxwell wrote him a letter. Mac Maxwell said, you are right. It is a field, and I have the mathematics to Faraday was ecstatic. Imagine an old man at the end of his uh, 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 life. Nobody paid attention to him. By the way, of all the scientists, Faraday has my most respect. He didn't file any patent. He refused the, uh, 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 the knighthood, if I, if, I'm, if I remember right. He refused to be the president of a royal society. I mean, everything that uh, everybody in uh, academia treasure today, he said, that's nothing to me. All I'm after, all I'm after <coughs> is the <coughs> science, the secret of nature. But the downside of that is nobody paid attention to him with all these titles, knighthood. So, so he was neglected until Maxwell found him. Maxwell was a young person. Maxwell uh, 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 started to uh, uh, look into it 
in 1860s. Faraday died in uh, 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 1867. Maxwell contacted Faraday, I believe, uh, two years before that, about 1865. Uh, he wrote uh, uh, a paper on it. And Maxwell explained mathematically how electricity and magnetic field interact with, with each other. But Maxwell didn't live long. He died before he was 50. He wasn't famous. He was not famous at all. There were a lot of competing explanations of what's behind Faraday's experiment. Maxwell, when he died, nobody paid attention. But as the years after, all these competitors' theory went out the window. He and himself alone survived. And, and, and this is uh, uh, the foundation of Tesla. But before, before we get to Tesla, there's another person worthy of the title, in my opinion, father of electrical engineering. He had to step in because there are a lot of misconceptions, even at the highest level of our society. What's our society? Our society is called IEEE. Right? Any, any here, anybody here remember IEEE? Fantastic. I think you should all consider joining the, uh, the IEEE. What's IEEE? What's IEEE? Institute of Electronics and Electronics. Institute, Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineering. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're a vice president. Great, fantastic. Yeah. And also president of women. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. No, I, I'm a member since 89. <laughs> okay, I'm too old. Right. But even, even within our society, we got it wrong. This, this was uh, uh, given to, uh, uh, th this was a plaque made by IEEE, and this was supposed to be the Maxwell equation. You, you learn it from um, your field class or your energy con conversion uh, class, except, except these four equations are nowhere to be found in Maxwell writing. <laughs> How come? Right? How come what we call the Maxwell equation are not in Maxwell's paper? Tell operator didn't exist. What didn't exist? The Dell operator. The, right. So, so who 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 gave uh, 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 who gave us the Dell operator? I don't, I don't remember the name. That should be on top of our head, right? Or on top of see, this is what's wrong with uh, uh, the story we've been told, right? <clears throat> I tell you what. My, I, I, I don't have time to give you the whole story today. <laughs> Maxwell wrote the book, Maxwell died, nobody paid attention. But Maxwell's book was in the library. One day, somebody walked into a library, looked at the book, and he couldn't put the book down. Very complicated writing. Lots of equations. Altogether, 20-something equations. nowhere near the form that can be applied by Tesla, can be applied by engineers. So Maxwell was important in engineering as a, science, as a scientist, but we need a bridge. We need a bridge to make Maxwell understandable, useful. And that person received no formal education. That person that person, uh, uh, for the most part of his life, were unemployed. That person was, was uh, uh, ignored by a scientific establishment. And that person gave us these four equations. And that person, we don't even know his name. Talking about injustice. Right?
we should have known long time ago. Right? So he, 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 uh, he picked out the book, he couldn't put it down. He said, this is exactly what I need. So why did he need the uh, uh, Maxwell book? Because he has a burning desire to know something. What does he want to know? Remember this uh, uh, communication between London and Paris under the cable? You have, uh, do we have the pen? Uh, marker. Oh, here. We said uh, we can uh, use electricity to, uh, to make mechanical motion. So, so, uh, so, so, so they send this current over the under, undersea cable, right? long distance. By the time, by the time uh, uh, they receive at the other end, they found something like this. Sneered. Sneered. And if it's smeared too long, you, you gobble up the message, become useless. But nobody can explain this. How did electricity travel through the cable? How did it change form? And more importantly, how we prevent it from happening? How do we recover the original signal? So this person was a telegraphist. He worked, he worked he, at that time, that's the highest position in engineering. You, you operate the telegraph. That's as good as you, as you can get in the technical field. But he quit. After a few years, he quit. And I need to understand this. So he walked into the library, he picked out a book, and he never let the book uh, go for nine years, nine years, before he reduced it to uh, to, uh, uh, to a vector form, using vectors, field is vectors, right? He he started the, that, uh, that 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 that, uh, that way of uh, representing the field in, in vectors, but also it's in differential equations. But differential differential equation is hard to 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 uh, to work with, so he invented a method called operator calculus. He turned differential equations into algebraic equations. And we never gave it credit for. We call it Laplace transform. And this mistake happened in my class last semester. A, a, a student, a great student, gave a presentation. So this Laplace uh, uh, gave us this man. No, Laplace had nothing to do with it. This person did. But we don't even know his name. What's wrong with us? Right? So, so, so it took him nine years. He, he, he lived with his mother. <laughs> eh? He even refused the uh, 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 welfare. He said, I don't need the uh, government subsidies. Eh? But he gave us these equations. Eh? So uh, I will continue this story uh, uh, on Thursday. But before I let you go, I want to uh, show you uh, what, I, uh, what I have in mind for you to do. Right? Because this is, uh, oh, where's my slide? Can you, can you? Yeah. Let me see. This is what I want you to do. Right? How we proceed in this class. Right? <clears throat> I will go over the syllabus on Thursday. Right? But this is what I have in mind. Right? I want you to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, start reading, writing, and producing a piece of history in electrical engineering. Go find your own story. Go find your own uh, hot button. Right? Write, write or produce something. You know how easy it is to, uh, to uh, uh, I see this on, on YouTube all the time. A short video, maybe one or two minutes, maybe three minutes, or even a short video like 30 seconds, explain something. Right? Go back to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the origin 
of uh, 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 intellectual engineering and do something with it. Recover your intellectual curiosity. <laughs> right? So, that, so that, that's one aspect uh, uh, of what I would like you to do. Uh, and the other uh, uh, part is I wrote you an email, right? Uh, uh, so at the end of last semester, did you receive it? Those who, uh, I, I encourage you to, to uh, uh, do something, right? Because uh, uh, I, I don't have time to t uh, too much time to talk about today. Today, in today, the theme of technology is integrating physical world with cyber world. What they call cyber physical system. That's us. And they are connected through signals, through systems. Right? And high school students start to do it. I, see, I, I start to see uh, high school students using Arduino board, using Raspberry Pi to a project. And what are the, uh, uh, the boards for? The board receives signal and sends command and process the information. Right? So that's something uh, I have in mind. That you, you, uh, that you will uh, have some hands-on experience. If you can do this uh, in conjunction with your lab experience, that's great, but you don't have to. You, know, you, you, you can get a board uh, for $20 and, uh, and start play with it, and that's the benefit will uh, 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 last a, uh, a lifetime. You know, the, uh, integrating the physical world with the uh, 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 cyber world, and project apparatus reports and demonstrations. I want to, that you have something in your hand to demonstrate to your employer. When you go on job interview, you show them this is what I did. You show them something like that that they never saw before. Except this can once. You can do uh, real-time demonstrations. Yeah, so that's hands-on experience. It's more of a thought, thought uh, uh, experience. And this is hardcore uh, engineering. So this is what we had before. You know, concept, method, mathematics. And this will be uh, 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 measured by quizzes, exams. Okay, so this is how we're going to run this class. And if you uh, 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 have any uh, uh, idea, any, 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 uh, uh, go back, brainstorm with, with yourself. I like to see you working teams. I never have it done before at this level. Working teams, you can have one team of say uh, five people or six people. Okay. One good writer, one with, with, with good with words, maybe one producer with videos, right? One very hands-on person, like their rules, okay? And then everyone else will be uh, 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 filling in the blanks, right? So, so, so form a team, you, you can form one team to do both, okay? So that gives you a uh, kind of a teamwork experience before you get to senior design. Because when I teach senior design, a lot of chemistry issues. When you finally form a team, how do you work with others? You have no experience working on a team like this before. So why, why don't we start now? Yeah, so, so these two are something that you probably haven't seen before in other classes. Yeah? And these are the things that, uh, that uh, you are familiar with. I'll keep. Maybe later on I'll get rid of them, but <laughs> I'll keep it for now. Right? So, so we're going to have a completely new, new experience in, in this class. Don't be afraid I'm working with you. We're, we're in this together. Okay? So uh, what I could see, we have about six, uh, 50 people, so maybe 10 teams. Okay? Each team will have a, a, a subject. So I like, to see people, uh, I like to see people with leadership. IEEE, women's uh, engineering, step forward with ideas and recruit people to work with you. Okay? So that's your homework for today. Okay? Come, up with, come up with ideas. Fun people. Okay? Then uh, over the, this week, next week, we start to uh, uh, formulating teams. Okay? I'll see you on Thursday. You know, uh, I was just talk, talking to a, a professor from Mexico, Dr. H uh, Cyril Ramirez. You know, one of the quotes that I, I got from him, 
He said, uh, uh, in Spanish, engineering translates into uh, ingenuity. In English, and the word engineer comes from uh, the word uh, engine of a train. So engineer was originally the guy who uh, drive the train, but not in Spanish, not in Latin. So there's something intrinsic to engineering. We're not just memorize a bunch of formula and try to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to put it to use. There was no formula to follow for Volta. 1799, he created something out of nothing. How about you? How, what can we learn from that experience? You know, can, can one of the uh, 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 teams uh, 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 dig, dig this uh, uh, history out and uh, find out how he did it, find out if you can reproduce it and videotape it and show it to class or show, let's create a uh, YouTube channel, put it on the YouTube for the class to share. I think that would be very wonderful. That would be very uh, uh, informative. You know, it, it's, it's, it's how everything started. Without this, there will be no electrical engineering or electronic engineering. Right? So 17, 1799 was uh, an important uh, number. What happened to 1820? For those of you who are here, Orsted. What happened to Orsted? He got lucky, <laughs> right? He got lucky. And he discovered by accident the connection between electricity and magnetism. It used to be considered two, totally, uh, to, uh, totally separate things. Now he found the connection by accident. Maybe you get lucky somewhere in, uh, in your career. But, but this experiment, uh, can we make it smaller? Can we miniaturize it, put it in our pocket, and show it to people? This is how electrical engineering started. Right? We, we don't have to have this a huge battery, a huge power supply. Right? We can have a, a little wire connected to the battery with some resistant don't short circuit battery and put a canvas next to it. You can reproduce this whole thing in your pocket. And we can use that uh, to tell our story. Our story of engineering. This is what we study. This is not derived from physics. No formula can give, can, can give this dimension. It's sheer human ingenuity. And you all have it. What we all shared it, the human trait. And uh, uh, what, what makes uh, Orsted stand out is he hands on to it, he grab it, he never let it go. And s some other people may just say, uh, oh, it's a passing curiosity, and this happens, so let's move on. But he registered in his mind. This was the only big contribution he had. And this was a huge contribution. Okay. So, so how about a, 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 a team recreating this, put in a pocket, have, a, have something uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, you can show for, and also make a YouTube video. This is a, a video I found online. I just uh, Google searched it. This is the only one I found. It's a, it's, a, it's a video in a different format. I had to convert it to, I had to do a Google search, how do we convert a video form, format from one tool to another, to, to MP4, so I can put it in the PowerPoint. I did it myself. Imagine, you, know, you guys are so uh, advanced, years, light years ahead of me in, in, uh, in, uh, in YouTube, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, internet searches. Imagine the damage you could do. All right? You, you, uh, together, we can change how engineering is taught. We, we, can, we can create a YouTube channel of CSU uh, signal systems or CSU electrical engineering. I, I found many, many videos on YouTube, very, very, uh, very informative. But I'm looking for something different. I'm looking for something that show the inner work of engineering. 
you know, the appreciation of ingenuities. And how, how such a big discovery was done by accident? How, how he could easily miss it? I'll show you later on how Edison easily missed a huge discovery. But if you don't have a scientific mind, even this is hit you, you wouldn't recognize it. Edison is a great inventor, no mistake about it, but not the, great, not the greatest scientist. Otherwise, he would have another big invention under his name. So this, we don't take it for granted. This can be easily missed, just a passing interest. But, but yet, something happened in 1820, and uh, the rest is history, I did say. Right? <coughs> so so uh, 1837, there's something else directly come from uh, this uh, discovery. It takes 17 years, but what happened? 17 years later, you, you connect dots in your mind. Uh, uh, not quite. What's that? Uh, telegraph. Yeah. I think it's 87, if I'm not uh, uh, mistaken. Let's go see 18, 18, 1837 and 1851. What happened to 1851? <clears throat> 30 years later, they can communicate between Paris and London using this invention. 30 years later. So this is not physics, although you only heard about this in physics. Austed experiment. But people are creative, people are imaginative, people can see. Who can see? Engineers. The people with the, uh, the mind of engineer can see. Here's the Austed experiment. This is what we mean. This is what, the, what it means to engineering. We can use this discovery and we can meet a critical need of human being. What's the, what's the critical need of human being the telegraph met, uh, met? What is the critical need? So th that's what makes this possible. Right? This is the predecessor of this. So if you cannot make connection with it, make connection with your cell phone. A, a, a critical need of communicate, of connecting. Right? That, that, that quickly happened. So, so I'm sure there's uh, several steps in the middle. You know, I, I, I do not, uh, I'm not a historian, I, I don't give you all the details. But I, I, I point to you important events from 20 to 37 to 51. But Faraday's summer fit in here. Faraday was no engineer. Faraday, big name. So, so what stimulated Faraday? What made him uh, couldn't put down his work? <coughs> what made him a great physicist? Yeah. Mac Maxwell Bock? Intuition. Intuition. What intuition? Maxwell Bock, yes, but Maxwell Bock came later. See, <clears throat> the, 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 the book of physics would have you believe that Maxwell wrote the book, and then somebody applied this, then you have all this nice, right? So that, that's a, a, a mentality of applied science. You first start with mathematics. Math, Ma Maxwell is a ma ma mathematician. Then you uh, 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 come up uh, with a, a theory of physics. Then you uh, apply physics, then engineering. But the history doesn't happen like that. I don't, I don't remember if it was Maxwell or Faraday, but wasn't one of them they didn't uh, put patents? Faraday. Faraday. Faraday, Faraday invented something but didn't patent it. Faraday can be the president of the Royal Society, he refused it. Faraday can be, can be, uh, uh, can be a knight can, you know, by, 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 the, by, the, by the appointment of the queen. He refused it. That, that's a sad story. 
But but the, the the main story is something stimulated Faraday's mind. What is that? And by uh, knowing this is important because someday you may be stimulated by something. Curiosity. Curiosity. Now, Faraday had a curious mind, for sure. Very good. So you have to be curious. You you have to know. You you have to want to know. See, that, that's the side thing I see uh, in some of the seniors. I gave the same talk to the seniors last year at the part of the senior design uh, uh, presentation. The room was very quiet. It was not a single question. Yeah. It, 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 it gave me an impression that the senior design students are ready to go, are ready to, to leave CSU. Right? So, so yes, uh, 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 we all come with curiosity. We are born with it. It's human nature. But sometimes the external events, the education uh, that we went through, sometimes instead of encouraging it, demean uh, diminishing it. Right? So, so maybe through this uh, 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 reminiscence of history, we can sort of uh, come back to our roots, come back to our authentic mind. So let's, 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 uh, let's, let's uh, 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 think about this again. What stimulated, there's something specific that stimulated Faraday's mind, and uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, he uh, persisted for six years. What made him uh, 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 persist for six years before he made his big discovery? What change shape? Right, that's that's uh, that's uh, that's a different guy. That's but but good. You it registered somehow, right? It's, 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 uh, that, that's stimulates somebody else's mind. But I'll, I'll get to that. Right, the symmetry. Yeah, I I know I know I know what you mean. Uh, what Orsted did? Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Lightning? Yeah. Well, he there's something uh, he, he did many many th many many things. Uh, but what I meant is what I'm talking about is not uh, lightning. What I'm talking about uh, co coming back to, coming back to, uh, to 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 that comment is about the connection between electricity and magnetism. You know, also shows one aspect. What was missing in Allstate that uh, Faraday feels strongly about? How magnetic, or if electricity could generate magnetism, the reciprocal had to be true. Right. Right. That's exactly what's missing in, 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 in Allstate. If Allstate is uh, uh, a, a greater scientist, Allstate would, would try to answer that question. Instead, Orsted was having, oh, Electricity generates electricity uh, generates motion. Let's, let's come back to Orsted. Yeah, Orsted's happy, probably happy. Oh man, I made this groundbreaking discovery. I I found a connection between the electricity that flows into the uh, uh, wire and the mechanical motion. Where's my uh, <laughs> compass? Where's oh yeah yeah here here yeah a a, a, a magnet. And Orsted, Orsted, uh, Orsted is pretty fun with one way of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, a causal relationship. Electricity causes magnetic force, right? But that's not good enough, right? That's not good enough for Faraday. What Faraday want? That's 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 is it Jordan or Tyler? Tyler, Tyler. Where's Jordan? Where's Jordan? Jordan Funk. Okay, <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> I have some uh, uh, work from your brother. I'm going to show today. <laughs> yeah, your cousin. Oh, uh, your cousin. I'm sorry. <clears throat> anyway. So, 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 so you see, before they make this discovery, something happened in their mind. 
and something could happen to, to your mind. If you watch, you observe, and something may, 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 uh, may stimulate your mind. Why this? Why not that? Right? This, this is a human being. This is, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, our nature. And Aristotle uh, said 2,000 years ago, uh, 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 all man by nature desire to know. We have an innate desire to know, and that is exhibited over and over again. Orsted and Faraday. So let's talk about Faraday. What did Faraday do? What, did, uh, what took him so long? You know, Orsted got lucky, right? He didn't have to work, for, he didn't look for it. It dropped on his, on, on, on his lap, but not true for Faraday. Faraday was looking for it. Further looking for, for six years for, for that. And further, I wasn't sure if, even, even if he had a conviction, but the, he had a conviction that the, if electricity generates magnetism, the reverse has to be true because nature is by, by, by what? Symmetric. So he was looking for it, he couldn't find it. For six years, he couldn't find it. Why? What makes it difficult for Faraday? The realization that the magnetic field had to change. Right. You can have a wire in the magnetic field. Right? Two things. You have magnetic field, you have wire. But the mag magnetic field doesn't generate electricity unless Unless what? Unless there's a change. And that there's a change uh, of, electric, uh, of magnetic field um, on the wire. So the, so the wire has to, you know, now, nowadays we know, you know with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, uh, with the alternator in your car, you know. Right? The, the, you have a coil, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a has to spin. You know, the, the wire and magnetic field cannot be stationary. It, it, one has to change. One has to uh, move. Right? Later on, we say, oh, of course, it makes sense. It's the moving electrons that generate magnetic field. It's the moving electrons. But there's no counterpart of a uh, magnetron, right? But something has to move in order to produce electricity. And that's what's hard. So how, how we showed it uh, on, the, on the screen, how did uh, uh, Faraday found it? That's another experiment you can, rec you can recreate and maybe even put in your pocket. You can miniaturize it. Let's, let's, get, let's get to the Faraday experiment. This one. Right? <coughs> this is just a meter mirroring <coughs> electricity. Okay, but this is the key. The stationary coil, okay, <clears throat> the coil that uh, uh, Faraday wanted to generate electricity, and this is a moving coil. This coil is charged, so this coil is, emits, electro, uh, uh, emits uh, magnetic uh, fields, magnetic fl uh, flux, and this coil has to move before the uh, stationary coil uh, uh, can have uh, electricity, can have current. Wonderful, isn't it? Now it's, of course, hey, it's, 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 uh, now he had a, a, a Faraday's law. Faraday's law, what's the Faraday's law? Did you take physics? Mm -hmm. Would the teacher in physics talk about Faraday's law? In addition to relativity? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so not only he discovered, he, 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 uh, he coined a further law. This is how, this is how uh, electricity and uh, uh, magnetic field interact. That's Faraday's law. No mathematical proof. Faraday has very little to do with mathematics, right? So the, again, a, a proof, not everything comes from mathematical derivations. You must 
you must employ to full, full, full capacity of your human ingenuity. Even the science doesn't come out of science. <laughs> and, and, and you want to teach engineering as though it's derived from science? There's something not quite right in my view, right? But that's how uh, engineering is taught worldwide. So who am I to question it, right? But question I must. Question you must. Right? <clears throat> I think this is, a, uh, uh, we get into the spirit of scientific inquisition or engineering inquisition, whatever you, you, you call it. Right? Before you take a class, before you uh, put any thought into something, you must have a desire to know. You must have a question. You must have some, some, some problem to solve. Otherwise, you learn theory, you learn, you say, what's all this for? You lose, you lose, you lose that curiosity. After four years of that, you're done. You're brain dead. You forgot how to be curious. And that's the, the, the biggest damage you could in, inflict on yourself. Or the education can inflict on you. Because, uh, uh, <laughs> I take it, myself as example from, even though I'm a scholar, but for many years I, I, uh, I wasn't doing it the right way. I can publish papers, I can, I can teach classes, I can function, but I was not functioning as a hu fully blooded human being. And I don't want you to repeat my uh, detour. Uh, and this is how we do it. We go back to the roots. We go, or we go back to the source. We see, how did he do that? How did he do it? What drives him, what drives him <laughs> for six years? And finally, he, he discovered it. It's a conviction, almost religions. Religious conviction that nature is symmetric. Uh, and it, it has, uh, he's hands on. Faraday is no mathematician. He worked with his hand. Right? He made this himself. Right? And he had a way to design, that's the key word. He designed, he designed this experiment that show the connection. You talk about design? Look at his design. He had a question and he designed something to answer his question. Although he didn't succeed at first, uh, otherwise he would, uh, today it takes uh, uh, six days, not six years, for you to make it, right? If that long. Right? But he went through the meticulous, pro I don't know how many times he failed. And that's one of the things you can write about. What they then further encountered before he found the right way. You can learn maybe more from your failures than from your success. There's so much we can learn from history. Right. So, so that's 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 Faraday. That's that's not 37. That's not 51. That's 1831. Right. Faraday made this discovery in 1831. So, so now, now you see the, uh, uh, the numbers are lining up. <laughs> this is in the middle of the uh, Industrial Revolution, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I believe this is how the physics should be taught. This is how all our courses should be taught. Starting from history, starting from the, the people who uh, made the original discovery. And if we can get, get in their mind to learn their material, to learn their results, it would be uh, straightforward. Or well, at least less painful. Right? So as, as my, uh, 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 my, my uh, uh, intention is uh, uh, I, I use this class as a bridge 
you know, bridging your uh, previous uh, learning experience in physics, in chemistry, in, in mathematics, you can apply the same thinking. You ask the question, who did it? How? Why? Okay. And, uh, and then you transition to engineering. And you take that, and you uh, enrich yourself, and you empower yourself, and you build up your mind, the right mind to tackle engineering uh, curriculum. Okay. Not everyone, maybe not even one uh, uh, professor would go this route. Right. This uh, I, like I said earlier, I uh, I uh, uh, and this is we 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 brought this a uh, uh, course back after 20 years of uh, hiatus, uh, and, and we don't want to repeat our uh, our, our past the uh, uh, past past the uh, 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 mistakes. Okay. So so we brought it back. Let's let's teach it the, the right way. Let's let's teach it as a bridge course, bridging science and engineering. And that's my intention, and I hope you're on board. And I want you to do your part. I want you to, go, uh, to, to dig out this history you, uh, on your own. I want you to team up. I want you to write. I want you to produce videos, just like uh, the, uh, uh, the Orsett uh, uh, video, but much more compact, much more uh, uh, targeted to engineering education, to engineering students. Okay? And, and, and gradually, we can, we can build a, uh, a library. We can build a YouTube channel. We can have a playlist. You tell me. <laughs> and uh, we, can have a, 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 we can send a future student, high school student, if you, 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 you want to learn uh, engineering, start with uh, Volta, 1799. And move on to uh, 80, uh, 1820. And then move on to 1831. Now, if you know that part of history, you know what to do next. I want to have that. I want to uh, to to uh, uh, to give you an opportunity to be part of it, to get it right, not only for yourself, but for future students. Yeah. So 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 that's pretty much what I had uh, in the last uh, uh, last class. At, at the end of, uh, last class, this is what I want to do in this class. This is. Uh, I don't have the syllabus yet. I'm, going, I'm making it up. I'm literally making it up <laughs> as we go. So, so uh, uh, you do two things, uh, three things here. Okay, you are going to read and write about history, and you're going to produce the uh, videos out of this. Yeah. Um, so, are, is there going to be a place? So, I have in the past made a website and just put all my publications and yeah. art papers on the on a website. Okay. So maybe a class website could archive. We could do that. Uh, yeah. Also. I'm open to and so those can to be posted in the YouTube videos. Right. I, I'm open to idea. I mean, Devin here uh, uh, already wrote me a, a, a long email. It took me half an hour to read it, but he had a very detailed suggestion of how how we go about doing it. I like to see people uh, uh, with a production experience. I, I used a, a, a couple of years ago. I supervised senior design team who won the final prize, first place prize, five thousand dollars. I didn't get any of that, but <laughs> I'm very happy, <laughs> right? And the uh, key to that uh, uh, success was uh, one of the students with a double major, electrical engineering, and guess what? Yes. Theater. 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 <laughs> so she impressed the uh, the judges. I, I don't know, I have, I have no word to describe it, <laughs> right? So that, that, that kind of talent that, uh, that uh, we could uh, use, we could use producers, we could, we, we could use uh, writers. Um, I, I know this, uh, some of you write for the school uh, uh, newsletters, or you, you know. Uh, I produced a three minute video for the CSU uh, website. They had me write the script. Who can write script? <laughs> Right, learn how to write a script. You know, a, a three a three minutes uh, video. I it took me an hour to write a script, and I didn't do it right. I mean, you can you can see from the uh, video, I, I didn't look happy. <laughs> I was manipulated into, but but I had a script, the video. But the way I look at the the video, the on the YouTube, uh, TikTok. Anybody into a TikTok? <laughs> no, I mean there's so many different ways of making a, a, a videos uh, these days, and they're so spontaneous. 
So, so I, I'm 30 years behind you. So, so I'm, I, I, I'll let you run with it. But, uh, but, but, but these are the things I, uh, I, 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 I like to see from you and give you opportunity to, uh, to excel, to, to, to develop not just uh, your engineering skills, but important, more importantly, your skills to communicate your idea to others in a very short time. Uh, I, I, commercial, I, I invented the uh, ADRC, uh, as you, you heard, and uh, we commercialized it. We had to convince investors. You know, the investor put in over $10 million into the technology we created here. Then you have to convince people. And these are not technical people. These are uh, uh, money, money people. They talk, they talk different. They, they use different language. All right. so, so one thing I learned is the elevator speech. Have you heard that phrase? Elevator speech. Sometimes you only have 50, 15 seconds with this guy in the elevator. You have to sell your ideas. On, on, on Wikipedia, any technical item, you have to use one sentence to describe what it is. Right? Then you have one, one paragraph, one short paragraph to describe. <coughs> then you have room to, <coughs> if you get people's attention, then people will read the details. We never learned that <laughs> in school. Did we? Right? So to so communicate. Now, now uh, why, why the short video is so uh, powerful, so uh, popular? Because uh, uh, people say one picture worth one, a thousand words, right? Now that's literally. You have f uh, a 15 second video, how much uh, can you convey? Uh, you can convey a lot. Right? How about conveying the, uh, the, the uh, ingenuity of uh, Faraday in 15 minutes you, or in 15 seconds? Can you do that? Or, you know, if, it was, uh, if it's too, uh, too, too short, how about two or three uh, minute video? And that you have to write a script. You don't have to, but uh, that's one way to do it. So, so, so that's, that's something I, I'd like you to uh, start uh, uh, working on this next, you know, this week. By next week, Tuesday, form a team. Tell me who is on, who, who, what he, I like the senior to take, uh, to take, to take, to take uh, a leadership role. If you, I mean, you're a senior, you, you, you've been through this, right? And, and, and you take it as a, as a technical elective. So, so senior, raise your hand. Right? So, so at least we have four. Uh, right? Double major. So. Okay, double major. Then, then raise That's your hand. Technically 14. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, so writers. What about writers? People good with words, right? So, 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 so each team, I think, you, you, you want to have a leader that 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 uh, if you work in a company, you you you're part of a structure, you have leadership, uh, you got organization skills. I think each team uh, 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 would would like to have one, someone uh, uh, strong in words, someone uh, 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 familiar with the video production. Or at least uh, uh, not shy from it, and someone with hands-on who can uh, make the coils, further coils. Right? I think if you have those four uh, 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 you know, four aspects covered, you can do great work. You know, so I so I think maybe uh, we, we can have a team of five or six people. And we have a uh, fifty uh, students in this class, so that's ten teams. That's quite a bit of production. I don't know. Maybe uh, each team. Produce two videos, that twenty videos by the end of the semester. Right? Maybe you can take the first six week, do one, and uh, 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 the, the, the the next six week do another one, and uh, and make some uh, some improvement. Yeah. Uh, would you uh, say that you're looking for videos? Are you looking for something that has the potential of going like, viral and blowing up, or something that's just more like educational you know, that promotes the profession? I'm I'm fine with both. If it can go viral, that's great. We we make CSU go viral. We can have a drone outside and take a picture of uh, you know, take a short video of uh, this uh, fantastic building, right? And uh, I'm uh, Tiger uh, 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 helped me put the the lecture video on the web. And uh, if you if you uh, need uh, a piece of that, you can do a clip. And uh, insert into you, I'm fine with anything you. Uh, we're talking about uh, we keep the channel closed, right? 
close. It's unlisted, so anything yeah. on the channel basically, uh, we'll, we're gonna, it's on a, a links will be uh, put on Blackboard, and then if you just click the link underneath Blackboard, it'll take you to the unlisted video. So anybody who clicks that right. link, anybody on Blackboard will have access right. to it. So, so, so for for uh, 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 as a class, we we keep it unlisted, we keep it private, but later on for the producers, if you want to go viral. If you want to, to put put it out there for the uh, general public, you can do that. But but uh, but we wouldn't force force you to do that. Okay. Okay. Can we can, can we make that clear? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I don't want to force anybody's hand. So so this so YouTube gave us a tool to up, uh, the, the blackboard. The blackboard is very, for me is very hard to work with the blackboard. So we put a, a, a lecture video in blackboard. You can you can you can you can you can, you can uh, go and uh, watch. You can even maybe take a clip out of it if you want. But uh, I think by and large, my understanding is that people like to work with U YouTubes. And uh, short video uploads will be relatively painless, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that's what I had for the first part of your work. And maybe uh, uh, 10 teams, two videos. The second part is connected to the first part. So, the engineers are hands-on. If you have no hands-on experience, you're fun. You can, you can go uh, uh, become engineering professor, but not engineers. <laughs> okay? There's irony in that, right? <laughs> but but uh, uh, all engineering students would have real, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about just uh, 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 <coughs> kindergarten stuff in our lab. I want, I want you to have a real hands-on experience. Maybe recreating the uh, further experiment will put you uh, in touch. You know, how the coil was made, <laughs> right? How, how the experiment was designed. Yeah. That was meant to be uh, how the lab uh, should be run in the first place. You know, the, the, the lab idea, the, the, the engineering lab, in the engineering uh, uh, education curriculum, they come from Germany, from late 1800. They said, put the student in front of a real problem in the lab and make them work. Not the lab we have today. I'm not talking about just CSU everywhere. You know, I taught lab in other universities when I was a graduate student. It's not a real engineering problem. It's just a piece of equipment that you, 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 you do and do some, somewhat correspond to the lecture. Right, so, 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 so I'd like you to uh, have some real hands-on. And this is one I, I leave it open. It could be uh, uh, you, pr you reproduce what, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what we saw in history, or like I uh, 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 said in the email I sent to you at, at the last semester, I asked you to maybe uh, 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 get hold of uh, a uh, Raspberry Pi or Arduino board. Right? The high school students are doing that now. But that is a, is a, uh, is a key, uh, in the sense that uh, it connects. You know, that, that kind of uh, uh, device, we, we call it the uh, embedded system later on in the class. It's really the, 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 uh, the, 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 the bridge between the physical world and the cyber world. And you start with it. You can start with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, a, a simple uh, uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, uh, now. Later on, you, you go down the street, you work for PBG, and it's an enterprise level. All the devices in the factory are connected somehow through Cisco to a, uh, uh, to a cloud. Now you are monitoring in real time every piece of equipment everywhere in the world. Think about, think about the possibility that brought. Everywhere in the world, in the PBG plant, Every motor, every sensor is connected to the cloud. Okay? On, on this side, you have uh, computer science people, you have uh, uh, AI people, you have data analytical people, you have process control uh, at different levels. That's the future. That's the future of engineering. So let's start, let's start it today. Start with a, a, a Raspberry Pi or, or, or Arduino. See how the two worlds talk to each other. That's, that's something that I'd like to see here. So as a, as a hardware project, a hands-on project, maybe each team do two. One 
in the history, one in the future. Okay, connecting history with future. Right? You got the 15 weeks. Right? A good, a good high school team work, working with me can do this in months. Both. Two videos, two, two, uh, two hands-on experiments. So I don't think I, I'm asking too much. You let me know if it's too much to you. But I don't think it's too much for a team of uh, five engineers right, over the week, over the course of 15 weeks, and do this. Okay. You said that we would be able to combine them, like if we ended up making the right. YouTube videos of one of the past. Exactly. The future. Exactly. Exactly. You can combine these two. The video can be about your experiment, as well as history. Right? So again, I'm 30 years behind you. Right? I'm very clumsy with uh, with computers. I, I, I have a hard time uh, with a blackboard. <laughs> but I, I want to leave it open for you. Sky is the limit. You use your imagination. Okay? Driven by your own curiosity. Right? It's completely up to you. Right? So that's any 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 uh, any uh, question because uh, I, I I I doubt you you're asked to do something like that in other in, in other classes, so I'm happy to answer your questions. Right? Well, we can we can talk about this uh, uh, over the whole semester. Okay, I, I I like some team to get ahead. And show us how it's done. Actually, I want every team to get ahead. <laughs> right? To see. The possibilities. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, so those are two things that new. That's new. That's not the. Uh, uh, that's, that's why I'm still uh, working on the syllabus because <laughs> it's uh, unlike any syllabus I've done before. Because I was working on the syllabus uh, and I said, wait, why do I do this? This is this been, we did this 20 years ago. It didn't work. <laughs> right? Let's do something different. <laughs> so, so, so. Uh, um, so those, were, so those are two things that are uh, that, uh, new. Right? So this is uh, something I, I will work into the class. And I hopefully I can do it today. Yeah, I'm going to teach you material, but I'm going to teach you in the context of historical development. In the it's not just drawing the, in, in, in the formula that you have to copy and paste. So I'm going to experiment like, like the uh, Signals, the signature, you know, the, the characteristic signal, the characteristic, characteristic, characteristic uh, system. These are the questions that uh, uh, confront all our predecessors, all our pioneers. Okay, it's through their creativity, through their uh, uh, ingenuity, through their uh, uh, rigor. Now we have in our hand some really powerful tools, and I want to teach you those tools. Right, and I want you to turn around and apply this. Right, I want you to apply it to what you did in here. So they're all connected. That's what I want. That's all, I hope that's all we want. Right. Anyway, uh, so, so that's, that's, uh, that take, to, uh, take, uh, take us to the end of last, uh, last lecture. Right. <coughs> And uh, I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time uh, uh, with this class because I, I I don't want to rush it at, at the beginning. <coughs> I want to get it right. I get it right the first time, and have it uh, uh, recorded. Have the document uh, set up so next professor uh, will teach this class after I'm gone. Can at least retain some of it. Can at least. Uh, 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 Benefit uh, from uh, our our work here in this class. Okay. So so so, so that's lecture one, lecture two is uh, uh, electricity from practice to understanding. Okay. So so we have a lot of inventor, a lot of a lot of uh, engineers for throughout the history, throughout the, uh, the history of engineering, we have struggled to understand. 
we still struggle today. And this is my class last semester. Uh, last semester is, is about our struggle in the field of controls. Okay. So, so let me give a lecture on, on that. Can you, can you uh, uh, proceed? Again, this is, uh, uh, this is what the, uh, uh, where we start. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and we ask the question, we do the science, we do the, the, uh, the, uh, the engineering. The science is supposed to uh, uh, help understand engineering. But what is it to be understood? The scientist doesn't care. Scientists do science. Engineering do engineering, practice engineering. But who help us understand what we're doing? Okay, that's really the question. What, what, what is to be understood? Right? Let's start with Edison. I think all of you, we have, we have a chance to go west 30 miles. 30 miles uh, west from here. Milan, Ohio. What can you find in Milan, Ohio? Huh? His hometown. His hometown. You been there? <laughs> Have you, uh, did you stop by? No, okay. Well, Edison was born there. Edison was born in Milan, Ohio. Now, I don't have to tell you what Edison did, right? <laughs> There's no need. Let, 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 let. <clears throat> but in, in addition to uh, to uh, to inventor, he was a businessman. Uh, he, this is a very strange uh, 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 mix. He said, uh, I, I only invent something if it's a market. I didn't know scientist. <laughs> yeah. So let's see his struggle to understand what he was doing, to understand the implications. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so, so the list goes on. He, he, uh, he made such impact. To uh, to uh, uh, to our modern life, you know, uh, I don't want to go into the uh, details. I mean, you can you can you can you can uh, this information online. You can easily find it. But uh, I want to uh, <coughs> I want to 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 to, uh, to, uh, to to show his background. He has no formal education. He has only uh, three months of schooling by his mother. Eh? <coughs> And uh, uh, he started the working at the age of 12 on a train, selling newspapers. And he liked to do experiment in his barn, on his uh, father's uh, uh, farm. You know, maybe the farm is just house, uh, uh, barn. He, his father says he almost blew us all up. He was doing all this experiment. He, he, he did a chemical experiment on, on the train while he was working. Right, so there's a lot of story about the, uh, his background. So this is not a, a, a typical uh, 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 well-educated uh, gentleman. Yeah, go. <laughs> and uh, you have to understand, uh, you put your context when you uh, 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 read his uh, 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 work or he, read history. You have to put yourself in the context of that period. And in that period, you know, it's, it's a signature of the uh, society, you, 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 it's a society of immigrants. They come here, the primary concern of immigrants is what? Survival, make a, a, a living, make a, 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 a life, <laughs> keep yourself alive. So that, that's, that's where the driving force to be, to be, uh, to be efficient, to, uh, to make improvement on, in our farming tool. You know, all, all, after all these years of farming, the American immigrant uh, uh, invent a lot of new tools after they uh, uh, came here. Right, so it's in that spirit uh, 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 Edison lived. Uh, he's independent, non-conformist, so, so he, he, he wasn't educated in the traditional way. Right? <clears throat> and he said that <laughs> he would not invent anything unless there's a, a market. And this, is how, this is what he said about the mathematics. Yeah, it's always come after my experiment. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, here. This is the one big invention that he missed. This is the biggest regret, he said. And he said, I, I have never been able to understand how I came to overlook. <clears throat> overlook what? And this invention 
uh, this, this discovery was, uh, uh, was made by somebody else and was directly responsible for wireless communication. Maybe you can ask your, uh, ask your professor when you get to the communication class, who was the first one to invent wireless radio? <laughs> the senior took communication, right? Who, 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 who was the inventor that made the wireless radio possible? And this is the, the, uh, based on this. Italian, not American. And Edison was pissed. Tesla was pissed. We'll, we'll come to that later. The Italian. Okay. So, so what does it to do with this? This is a light bulb. I think he's known for light bulb, right? So he did all this experiment uh, 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 with 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 light bulb, and similar to similar to Austin, in this work, you know, he was trying to uh, to to uh, to uh, figure out why the light bulb you know, internal uh, the, the the inner side sometimes blackened. And so so see, so he he was doing uh, all this uh, uh, research on on finding out uh, what happened and what, uh, what was the cause of that. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to uh, uh, change it, uh, improve it, get rid of it. But in the process, he made the accidental discovery. And this, this was in his uh, notebook. He, he kept meticulous uh, uh, notebook. And in the notebook, he recorded this phenomenon. What phenomenon? No, this, this is the two terminal, the, you know, two terminal of, a, of a normal light bulb. But in one of the experiments, accidentally, they attach another terminal to the bulb. Remember, this is all vacuum. It's all insulated. Right? But somehow, somehow, this, this uh, uh, third terminal impacts the current between these two terminals. What's the big deal? Are you taking electronics? Have you get to the transistor part? That's basically the operating principle of a transistor. Or vacuum amplifier. Right? Because uh, uh, in the various communication, you have voice. The voice doesn't travel along. The voice has to attach itself to something else, right? And later on, we found we can attach our voice to what? Sinusoid. <laughs> if I have a sinusoid, and we can modulate, that's the key word, right, in communication. Modulate. We can modulate, we can make the sinusoid, the, uh, sinusoid the magnitude or amplitude go up and down according to the voice. Okay. It's called, uh, the, the, the sinusoid is called carrier wave. Right. It's in your AM video, uh, AM radio, your, your, your uh, FM, uh, you know, this is more, more your AM. Um, what's AM? Amplitude modulation. <laughs> That's made it possible. Okay. So, so, so uh, get rid of a filament. Generate, generate a uh, sinusoid and, and put your uh, microphone here. That, that, that tiny, uh, tiny change in the, in the third terminal will induce huge changes in the sinusoid. That's how they send the voice over distance. Edison discovered it. He missed it. He didn't see the implication. So he was no Orsted. Both of them accidentally run into something important. One of them recognized the significance of that the phenomenon. The other didn't. One is now we call a scientist. One is just inventor. This is why we, we put you through the rigorous education of math and physics 
to train your mind to think logically, to detect something that abnormal, something that the past theory doesn't explain. So this you have to discover. It. There's no way you can derive it from physics or from mathematics. No way. You can you you can uh, go from your uh, uh, physics book, say, oh, I'm going to design a, a amplifier or modulator. No way. It was discovered. And later on, we have a uh, uh, science built up behind it, right? And that sound is being taught to you. That engineering sound is being taught to you in your electronic class. It's part of a semiconductor physics that uh, gradually, you know, shape shifts into an engineering course called electronics. I started my career here teaching electronics. <laughs> I hated it. Why am I teaching this? The little package into a, 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 a chip. At that time, it's, it's a thousand or a million of them. Today, it's a billion of them. And this class teaches you how one works. In my childhood, I did that. I tried to put a, a radio together with one or two transistors. I need this to tell me what to do. But not when you have a billion transistor in a chip. You don't do circuit design anymore. So why am I still spending all this time uh, studying PN, P, PN, PN junctions? This is why I'm saying that the uh, 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 technology has changed. Education hasn't. We're still teaching it as though you're going to build a, a video with three tra transistors. It's important to know, but not at the level that uh, spend two semesters on electronics. You can learn a lot about it. You still are you are still required to take those courses, right? So, so don't don't uh, don't report to the uh, uh, the to CSU what I said. I'm a minority. I need to keep my voice down. <laughs> yeah? But but I I need to uh, to tell you what's what I think. Okay, Th these are fundamental courses. Th these are applied physics. Right? But they do not meet current need. Current need is what they call the system on a chi chip. SOC, system on a chip. You build a whole system on a chip. All these amplifiers, all this uh, 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 filtering, it's all on a chip. And you are not going to, uh, to, to study how each transistor works. There's, a, there's a billion of them. How you can spend your lifetime without getting near the end of it. So you have to take what you're given. You have to take, oh, this is manufacturer, there's a spec sheet, this is, chip, this is what the chip does. Yeah, you have to assume it works that way. And, and, and mostly uh, they did work that way. What you need to do is to figure out how to use it to meet your need, to solve your problems. Right? So, so, so yes, there's a, there's a, a, a connection between history and, and, uh, and today. <clears throat> we, we get into the minds of the inventors. Right? That, that same mindset will help us uh, solve our technology problem today, but, but at the same time, we have to recognize time has changed. The requirement for engineering skills and engineering knowledge has changed. And, and you are not, you have 30 years in front of you. I have 30 years behind me. That's the difference. So if I were you, I would look at this, and this gave, gave me the basic uh, uh, education, gave me a piece of paper, gave me a, a permission to practice engineering. Right? But what do I need to know to make sure that 30 years from now, I still have a job? I'm still covered, I'm still up to it. And that's, that's, that's your problem, not mine. 30 years from now, I'm dead. Pretty sure from that. <laughs> eh? But 30 years from now, you, want, you still want to keep your, your job. In your 50s, in your 50s, in your 50s and keep a, a high paying salary, you are being active to this. If you sit back, nobody's going to tell you what to do. You just go with the flow and you suffer the consequences. Or you can take an a, a, a active role and say, oh, this is where we are today. 
This is what's going to happen. In my best judgment of what's going to happen in 10, uh, 15, 20 years. And I will prepare myself for that. I'm going to take uh, 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 the uh, fate into my own hand. I'm going to control my own destiny. I, I'm going to get a sc uh, the, the skill set and knowledge that I can build on. It will never be enough, whatever we teach here, to build on it. Something to build on. A mindset, a skill set, the way of thinking, how you see the world. So, uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to make a connection to, to another person. Right? So Edison, Edison said, I don't need you. I, or if I need you, I can hire you. Edison says to, to mathematicians, to theoreticians. And Edison had this taste for academia. Right? So, so he did. General Electric, it used to be Thomas Edison, General Electric. Because of the, uh, some, you know, business people are nasty, right? So, so, so they drop his name. They, they kick him out of the uh, <laughs> General Electric. So, so he wasn't happy. He, he, he wasn't happy with the patent fight. He wasn't happy with the business. Uh, uh, but when he was forming or founding the General Electric Company, he needs somebody to, uh, to, uh, to do the calculation. And the big company, making motors, making transformers, Right? Edison can do, can, uh, uh, can, cannot do that. Edison has three years uh, of education, no mathematics that he could use. So he hired, he hired several people. One of them is Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Steinmetz is the name. I'm going to, to, uh, to, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, to mention his name uh, quite, quite often. Not only in this class, but in other classes. This, 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 this is a main person. Uh, this is a mathematician that uh, I don't know if any more, uh, any, 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 uh, any one, uh, any mathematician had more impact on electrical engineering than, than him. Uh, so let's go to the ne uh, to next slide. He came here, I believe, uh, this is, uh, I read it many years ago, so, so I don't remember exactly, but I think 18, 1899, 98, 99, somewhere there, just before the century. He was, he was a dwarf. He was trained in mathematics, but never got his PhD in Europe. So, so he was uh, uh, involved in the French Revolution of some sort. He was in trouble. The government sent out the uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the order to, to, to have him arrested, put in jail, and that was the only reason he came here to avoid a, a prosecution. But he came here. I forgot with introduction letter either to Edison or by Edison. I forgot. But anyway, he, he came here with a, 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 a letter of a recommendation. Letter of recommendation very important to young people. So you do well in this class, I will write you a letter. Yeah, that, that, that's the deal, right? Anyway, he, that letter saved his life. He get off boat, at least uh, Ireland in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in New York. He was in front of the immigration officer. They want to send him back. He, he was sick. He was a dwarf. And the immigration officer like him, what do I have, uh, have you for? There's no use. Right? Send him back. Right? You, 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 you can read more uh, about uh, uh, this part of history. I, I read a few years ago. It's, my memory is, is not uh, very uh, uh, sharp. But I remember he took out a letter, either to Edison or by, by Edison. And, uh, they gave him pass. So he was off the boat. There's no way he can go to university, no, no money. So he had to work. It happened, uh, somebody else, uh, somebody uh, uh, hired him to help make uh, e electric motors and transmo transformers. So this is uh, a mathematically trained intellectual 
off the boat into a company, start working with uh, transformers and uh, and uh, and uh, and the motors. He made a connection. <coughs> he made a connection between the mathematics he learned and the problems he saw in in uh, in power industry. In power industry, by that time, there was no mathematics. Everything is done trial and error. And when you design transformers, you are in trouble. Even today, <coughs> once in a while, you see something blow up in your neighborhood. It sounds like a bomb, a transformer blow, uh, 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 collapsing. There's some conditions. You know, even today, uh, we, we have that problem. In fact, a few years ago, uh, one of my senior design group uh, uh, did a project on active filtering for, for, for transformer, and they form a business afterward you know, to solve that problem. Anyway, uh, at, at, at turn of history, a uh, turn of century, there was no solution. It was just a try and error, and you just, today it works, tomorrow it doesn't. But he has mathematics to explain what works, what doesn't work, how do you improve it. So it's, it's what astonishing. He, within three years, he became the most well-known electrical engineer in the country. Within three years. He died in 1923. I remember that vividly because he influenced somebody at the Bell Lab. He went to Bell Lab in 1923, the year he died. He went to Bell Lab to give a lecture. He was half an hour late. Imagine if I'm half an hour late today, how many people will remain in this classroom? Right? You, give, you, you go and give a talk and you're half an hour late. Because what happened? This is Bell Lab, most uh, 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 famous research uh, uh, institute in the country. He was half an hour late. Uh, he, uh, when he got there, he was, uh, 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 he was uh, uh, given a, a standing ovation. Because of his, uh, 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 the, the, the contributions he made to the uh, 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 to the electricity uh, to the electric power com uh, uh, industry, and he, this is a side note, he influenced a a uh, 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 engineer in that talk in that very talk in 1923, and that engineer later on invented feedback amplifier. The term you are you familiar with the term in circuit feedback amplifier? That's an invention by Harry Black at Bell Lab. And Harold Black gets his act together, he, he sought for that together by listening to Stemmen's lecture. And later on in control, there's something called PID control. The inventor of PID also has connection to Stemmen's. He works for Stemmen's. So somebody like this influenced not just uh, 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 transformer design, motor design, the entire industry, the entire academic field. So even though he's small in stature, I mean, in, uh, figuratively, but he's, he had a large, large foot, footprint, largest of anybody I can, I can think of in electrical engineering. Right? So, but how many times did, did you hear his name? How many times did, uh, uh, did you hear uh, his story? This is, uh, th this is uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, best kept se uh, secret. And, and you can bring it out. You can make a centerpiece in electrical engineering. Because he was the very few people that made a connection between engineering practice and mathematics. Mm. And we, we, we now have a mathematics uh, uh, courses in our curriculum because people like him who demonstrated how powerful the tool can be. Right. So, so, so in the ideal world, somebody like him would teach us mathematics. He would teach us differential equations. And he would teach us how this will change the engineering practice. And, and he developed the model for hysteresis. You know we use uh, uh, iron core. You know we use a uh, uh, magnetic field, right? But, the, the, it, it, but it acts very strangely. It has something called hysteresis. It's not a, a, a simple, well-defined mathematical function, right? 
And, and later on, you learn in uh, energy conversion for the senior, senior students, you probably already learn in energy conversion. The hysteresis in, uh, in the motor, in the transformer, it's, you have to be deal, deal with it very carefully. And today, we are in the, in the uh, nano era, nanometer. We have a, 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 a atomic force microscope, right? And it's controlled by piezoelectric. And piezoelectric is notorious for hysteresis. But he has a, he has a problem solved. Yeah. Once, I be, once I begun, I couldn't stop. Yeah. So there's some logistic uh, issues uh, we want to uh, deal with, maybe uh, Tuesday next week. But I'd like to see some of you at least take a proactive action, form a group, select a topic, and have a discussion with me. Okay, I'll see you next week. <laughs>